Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how and why to use prefabs, but more specifically, the new prefab workflow that Unity introduced this year. Uh, currently, it's only in the beta uh, build of the uh, engine, but you can download that and have a go of it. And eventually, within the year, it will be in, um, hopefully by the end of the year, I'm pretty sure, it'll be in the actual release of the game. It depends whenever this release gets added to a proper build. If you go to your uh, Unity Hub, assuming that you use it, and if you don't, you should definitely use it, just go download it. What it means is that you, know, you can have all your projects like normal, but then you've also got um, installs, which means rather than having a separate Unity um, you know, download for each version of the software, you can actually just get all your downloads in one place. So this is the four versions of it I have installed. Um, so my main project is on 2.3, and 2.5 is the newest released as far as I'm aware. And then uh, 3.0b, obviously b meaning beta. Uh, that's what this new prefab workflow is in, but soon it'll be in the, um, well, non-beta, it'll be in the actual release. If you want to go on it, you see obviously official releases. So the most recent that I don't have is 2.1, and I actually have 2.5. Then there's the beta release, which is here. So just get whatever you need. Uh, if you're following along with this, you obviously should get the beta one. Uh, and then create a project, a new project using that version. Anyway, and then create project. Yeah, you can follow that one. Anyway, so once you're in your project, um, you know, if you're not using the beta version, there'll be some things which are slightly different. The first thing I notice seeing it is just the little icons on here are different. It makes it so you can tell eat more easily what um, kinds of things in the hierarchy they are. Uh, so normally they're just all, um, you know, black text and then blue if they're prefab. But anyway, so what I'm going to get into is there's three kinds of prefabs, okay? So, well, at least three ways of using it, the new system. So normally this is how you do a prefab, okay? So here you've made an object cube and you've done something to it. You maybe add a script to it. Uh, I don't know, what's it not got on it that we might use at some point? I don't know, we might use a rigid body, yeah? So rigid body, there you go. And I want to save that object to use it somewhere else. So I'll drag it down to my project view and there you go, you've got it. Now, one thing you'll notice is there's a uh, open prefab thing, which I'll show in a minute. So you got this prefab, so I can delete the cube in the scene. And then now, if I go to the scene, I can be like, all right, I want a cube. And then I want the cube here and here and so on. Now, obviously, they're just, well, whatever. Um, they're all the same, right? They're, and the names look different. But they're all the same, right? They've all got the rigid body on. They all have the stuff that the prefab has. Now, this is basically as far as you could go in it already. Well, obviously, if I took, like, this cube here, and I um, increased its size and then pressed apply, which applied isn't actually there anymore. It's kind of different now. Um, it still is there. Like, so if I pressed apply all, the size would get applied to all. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you in depth in a minute. You might already know that. If you're on an older version, it's usually open select and just apply. And then obviously apply means all things with that prefab. It's the same for all of them. But this new prefab workflow allows you to do much more. So First of all, I'll show you about the uh, prefab mode, which is what this is on the side here, open prefab. Then we're going to nested prefabs, which is like the biggest thing about it. If you if you already use Unity, you'll know uh, prefabs are great on having you know prefabs of objects. But the one problem you have is when you have prefabs inside prefabs, which is what nested prefabs are. It would be very problematic uh, because you couldn't really do it, basically. And everyone was always complaining. I looked up because I was confused why you couldn't do it. And everyone on the internet was being like, oh, you know, it's stupid. They haven't added this yet. And then eventually, when they did announce it, everyone was going crazy. And it, it's it's really good. Um, I'll obviously get into that. And then uh, prefab variance, which is basically how... It's like having a base class and then um, inheriting from that. So rather than just having a prefab, you can have prefabs of prefabs where if you tweak the one that's further down, it'll only affect that. Or if you tweak the one above it, it'll affect all below it, just like in a base class. Uh, so I will get into that. Let's get into the mode. So the prefab mode, basically how it works is you'll have your object here. And in a scene, normally, if you were to tweak a prefab, you would either have to tweak it down here, which you can't do anymore because they've changed it, or you would tweak it in the scene, right? So like, I want to say these actually have a mass of five. And then you see it's... um gone bold, which means you've changed it from the prefab, but now a new way of showing it is this uh, little blue little line. It means this thing is different from the um, prefab. So if I wanted to apply, I would usually just press apply, but now you'll see it says uh, the rigid body component is has been changed inside the cube, and it shows you what the uh, prefab's values are and what um, your values are. So we're saying this one is different. Now you can actually tweak it in here if you want. Uh, one thing you can do is you can actually right click on a particular thing if you want to change just that one and say yeah apply that which means the prefab now has it and if the prefab has it all the things using the prefab has it whereas uh you can also press revert which obviously there's nothing to revert right now so as i said if i if i tweak it go on here 
and I'm looking inside, I'm saying, actually, yeah, I don't want this one, so we can press revert, goes back to the prefab. And then um, if I had multiple changes, then I can just um, click like apply all, um, and it does all of the changes. So let's just uh, set that back to like one and one or whatever it was, um, like so. Now that's the actual one, and I've undone, so it's it's on all of them anyway. Roll on five. I mean, I could set the master one, but it doesn't matter. Now, a cool way of doing it is we can either click on the cube prefab and click open prefab, or we can uh, click the little arrow to the side, which will do the same thing as pressing that button, which is probably faster to do this. Because in your scene, you don't want to have to go into your project and find it in your like folders when you can just click on here and do it. Now, that'll open it in scene view, so we want to have game view open, so I'm going to have to just move my windows around a little bit. Uh, I could put that down there. Okay, so basically what it does is when you open prefab mode, it takes over scene view, so boom. And what it does is, here's the prefab, okay, the cube. That's what we've opened the prefab on. And now if we change it in here, it will change it in here straight away. So let's say we actually want these cubes to be a size of two, which is going to be giant. As you see, whenever I do a change and click, it will actually change it instantly because we've got autosave on. So you can actually just turn autosave off, um, which then allows you to have a save button. So let's say I want to change it, get it right, like maybe, you know, I don't think position will actually matter. Uh, I don't know, mass two. I've changed everything in here, and then now if I um, press save manually, then does it to everything. But the point is, it's just really nice to have like an empty scene to edit for your single prefab, and then it affects all of them, and it's really useful. Um, obviously, if you had things under it in the hierarchy, so if you had like a sphere under it that you then had like sticking out the top or something at point, point 0.5, as, as you see, it applies to all of them. And then if you... Well, we could leave it like that for now. But as you see, we're editing it in prefab mode. It gets applied to all of them. It's in its own nice empty scene. It's much easier to edit. Once you're done, you just press the back button there. And you're done. And now all of them have it applied the same. So that's super helpful. Now, that's that's all stuff that was uh, already like doable. It was just it's added nicest features, such as this override thing here. It makes it nicer to manage it. You can also compare to the prefab. And then, because um, you didn't used to be able to compare, you'd have to manually compare. That does it for you, basically. It nicely displays it. And we've got prefab mode, makes it much nicer to do all that. Uh, next, we're going to move on to nested prefabs. So nested prefabs is where you have prefabs in prefabs. So what does that mean? Well, let's say, for example, this sphere. Okay, we're going to actually uh, go into prefab mode and remove this sphere. Okay, now let's say the sphere was its own scriptable object. So uh, not scriptable object, damn, I've got the wrong thing in my mind. <laughs> so let's go for sphere. Um, let's just, you know, design that a bit. Um, we will create a material, red, currently not red, um, I don't like having it super shiny, um, all right, anyway, we'll put that onto the, uh, sphere, right, and we'll make the sphere a prefab by dragging it down here, or I'm, you might be able to right click and make a prefab, uh, I'm not sure now that it's actually prefabbed, um, no, you have to drag it down or something, that's the way I always do it, so we've got a prefab sphere, okay, it's fine. Let's go and go into the prefab mode of the cube now. Also, yeah, if you double click on the um, thing down here, it'll open it up. There's many ways to open it up. Now, if I get the sphere and drag it in here, for example, I'm going to, as you see, actually set it as a child of the cube. Then I can go 0, 0, and then uh, 0 0.5, that's in the center, um, sticking out like that. Now, as you see, that's applied to all, and because we had it outside as well, it's there. Uh, so let's just delete that. Um, now, what that basically means is now this prefab has a prefab under it. So what I can do is if I change the sphere prefab, which all the cube prefabs already have, let's open that. If I change something with this now, so if I, um, what could I do? Um, I could scale it and position it differently, I think. Uh, let's scale it on the X. As you see, even though it's its own prefab, it actually changes on all the other prefabs, which are the cubes, that use that as a prefab, which... It's something you didn't used to be able to do, so that's one of the new nice features. Um, so, you know, just anything you do will happen to all of them, and it's much nicer. The, a good example of this that I would want, of, uh, that I wish I could have in my game, which is on an older version of Unity, um, which is that, for example, let's say you have a character and he, or like, no, UI, actually, yeah, let's say you have UI and you have different kinds of uh, panels with different bits connected to them. You'll have certain things which are prefabs like inventory slots or something. So, so stuff that you have lots of, right? So different inventory slots. And let's say you want to, um, you know, change something on an inventory slot. And obviously they're all the same. So you want to apply it to all of them. But the problem is that 
if you have a prefab of the inventory slots, you then can't have a prefab further up in the hierarchy because you could only have one prefab in inside a prefab kind of chain in the hierarchy. So for example, if I had this cube as a prefab, I would not be able to have the sphere as a separate prefab. You can now, which is the benefit. Um, so if I wanted, like, I, it, was, it wasn't possible. There was no way around it. It was stupid. So you just have to awkwardly do it manually and it would take so much time, but now it's like saved so much time. So I'm so glad it's a thing. Um, as you can see, like imagine if you uh, did have something above this cube, for example, you then couldn't have the cube as its own prefab to use elsewhere. You had to have the parent thing as a prefab and it's just a pain. But obviously the pain's all gone now. So, you know, please, please use this. I hope it helps you. If it does, then obviously um, thank me. But rather than thanking me, actually, thank Unity. Uh, a lot of people aren't even thanking them. They're just kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> just kind of like, well, finally, at last, you know, glad you did it. But it's nothing to be amazed about. You know, they should have done it ages ago, but whatever. I'm just happy it's here now. So that's, that's good enough for me. Um, another feature to mention is the prefab variants. So... As I was saying, you can have prefabs of prefabs, which is like having a base class and then inheriting from it. So, for example, this this monstrosity here, this cube sphere thing. Um, let's let's make a duplicate of that. Let's make a all right. Let's say this is the base class, right? In terms of coding, this is the base class. Let's inherit from it. So we're going to right click on it, and we're going to um, oh, which one is it? Have they changed this from when I last looked? No, because I have to do it down here. Sorry. Uh, right click, create. And you go down and prefab variant. There we are. So we'll call this, um, you know, child cube. I don't know, not cub, um, cube. So basically, this is a prefab. It's still a prefab. You can put it in the scene. It's a prefab. But the thing is, though, it's a child of the other kind of prefab. So I can change something on here. Okay, like I can change the. Uh, let's make another material. Blue. When they're not, actually, the background's blue. We'll go for green. Um, so we'll make a green. Like so on. Uh, nicer green than that. Uh, I don't want to go too bright. Let's put the green on here. Okay, so we've got our green. Now, how it works is that is a. Uh, let's make sure it's actually applied and everything. So if I go to the child cube override apply. So I pressed apply and it didn't apply it to everything else because we are a child of those things. Those are our parents. So. If we change something on these, like the size, for example, if I go to the uh, cube and say, you know, scale everything, as you see, that gets scaled too, right? Everything gets scaled because those are all the same prefab, those three, and that one is inheriting everything. Everything this does inherits uh, to that. But anything you change on this will override this. So for example, obviously if I change the size, it's gonna change size for all of them, okay? But you'll notice one thing that I changed specifically on this one is the color of the circle, the sphere, sorry. So what happens is now, if I do something with this sphere in terms of its color, like let's say I create another color. So I go and make, um, I don't know, pink. If I now apply pink to this, you'll notice that it only applies it to those and not to that one that inherits because it already has its own color override. Now. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if this is simple to do, but we'll have a, we'll have a look. So if I go to the sphere, can I, uh, as you notice, I made the sphere, I opened it in its own prefab window. If I take the sphere now, um, is there a simple way for me to revert the... Um... Okay, so no, there isn't really a simple way to do that. As you see, the sphere actually has its own color, but I've, I've overridden it here. Um, one thing, yeah, the one thing I'm not sure about is, oh, there we go, revert, yeah. So if you go into the cube and then you uh, click on the revert overrides, you can actually, you know, revert the override, quite simply explain. So now we don't do that. And if we change the color again on the, uh, so remember child cube is the child, so cube. If we change the color now to uh, green on here, oh, oh, I clicked reset on the color, of, that's why it didn't work, because I reset the color of the material. Um, yeah, so that applies to all. So I hope you get that. And let's, for example, just say, now we have a child, so create prefab variant, child cube, yeah, sure, child cube variant, whatever. And we'll add one of those to the scene. So now this, this is gonna get confusing now, I'll just put it over here. So how it works is this, this, and this, these three here are all the parents. This is a child of these three, and then that's a child of that one. 
So it's the same logic. This is the base class. This inherits from this, and this inherits from this, which inherits from this. So it's all about chain. So now, if um, we change something on the base one, so if we go to cube here, and we change the color to red, we get the more red. Then if we go to the child cube, and we say, actually, no, the child cube is pink. Wait, oh, did I change on the wrong one? Uh oh. Um, what have I done? I have done something horribly wrong here. So this is cube. This is child cube. These have their own colors. No, they have their own, they have default color. That's that's why. Um, okay, so cube is pink. It says still it says default material. Uh, something wrong is something's going wrong here. Ah, no, because the sphere has pink. That's what I was changing. Um, we want to actually take that color off, I'd say. Let's let's revert that. Okay, so the sphere has its own color, sorry. Then the cube, the cube's sphere, this is this is a tiny kind of bit different. Um, so we're in the cube, the sphere in here then has pink, which should get applied to all. Then if we go to the child cube, and we apply red, then it only applies to those two. That's what I was meant to do. Um, so obviously this overrides it and then everything below inherits that. And then we go to the bottom one, which is child cube variant, and we can apply uh, green to that one. And that'll work on its own. So as you see, but then still, if we go back to the base one with the, ch the cube, which is the parent, the big parent, the main one, if we change like the size, which is not overwritten, overridden, then everything gets the size and stretch and whatever, whatever. So um, yeah, this is a really good topic to, well not topic, but this is a really good thing to get into and get used to using because you can, you know, you can use this all the time. It would save you so much time and help you in lots of ways. Uh, I hope this video was good at uh, helping you understand the system and, you know, I hope you go away and start practicing with it or maybe even make a project using it. Uh, if you like this video, then obviously leave a like, subscribe. Um, if you haven't already, check out my Patreon. Uh, I've got two Patreons currently. I'm going to give them a little shout out. I should have done that at the beginning of the video, sorry. Um, but thanks to, if I can remember correctly, we have Shaggy, the one with uh, the Shaggy profile picture. Um, we have Shaggy Rogers, and then we now also have a new Patreon from today, which is um, Phil Bourne. I need to add this to a thing to actually show at the start of the video. Sorry, I was meant to do that this one. Um, but yeah, thanks for those two for helping me on Patreon. Anyone else, I'd be gladly appreciated. Uh, I'll be sure to add you to the shout out list or whatever. Just have a look at the um, the like pledge rewards if you want. I did write them a while ago, so I might update them like tonight or tomorrow just to be more relevant because obviously I wrote it about a month or two ago and forgot I even had a Patreon. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for watching and goodbye. If you've got any questions, obviously leave them in the comments below if that's it. Thanks for watching.